Hello, what I'm working on is a fuel gauge for my 41 pickup. The fuel sender in the truck is no good. So I've decided to fit a completely separate fuel gauge and it arrived the other day. This is the sender and this piece goes here to extend it but I've took this piece out because I don't think I need it. Here's the float for it, so there's the float for it. So that goes in there, like that, and you set it with that screw. You adjust the height, you adjust the length, you snip, shorten the wire, and I'll, I might as well just show you. So that's got power to it. It's reading on the empty. As I move this up, which is, you can imagine that the um, the float is on there, and then the float floats on the level of the fuel. As this goes up, the needle goes up. It's quite quick to react, actually. It's not very heavily damped. So that goes up. It's just short of the full at the top end. But it isn't the top end that's critical, is it? You want to know when you're running out. You don't want to know when it's full. So as this comes down, that's just that side of the empty line. Obviously, that depends on if I have a good relationship between the float level here and the, um, you know, the level of the fuel in the tank. As long as I have an indication of when I'm running out of fuel, I'm, I'm fine. I've got a little three gauge cluster in the truck and there's one space available so this can go in the other space. It was cheap. It was like £11 delivered to the door. This bolt pattern doesn't match that. This is what it comes with, which must be some sort of standard. And that's where I've got. I don't want to make an adapter plate, six bolts to five. Why do that? This is just a piece of metal that's bolted on. So what I'm going to do is make a new piece of metal with the correct thing and just bolt, bolt the unit through the middle of it. So I just noticed this scrap hard drive and I've took the lid off it because I think this is, a, this is a decent piece of metal. It doesn't appear to be subject to corrosion. What I've just done here, I've, I've just cut a hole in the piece of cardboard and put it around there, used a pen and drawn around it and drawn the bolt pattern. So that's my pattern. So what I need to do now, I need to transfer that mark onto the actual pattern. So I'm going to transfer that to that. I'll cut it out first. Okay, I've roughed out the piece of metal. I'm going to leave the label on for now and the, the float direction is in the direction of the label. Oh. Okay, I can, I can see on that side. Can't see on this side very well, but maybe I will try and take the um, label off. That was the direction of the float, wasn't it? I'll put a dot there. This is um, goof off. I bought this when I was in America. certainly works well. Those are my six holes and that's the direction that the float needs to go in. So I need a hole in the middle and six holes there. It's not very flat is it? Oh well, I'll drill it and then I'll, I'll hammer it flat. I just um, took this top off of this and I noticed it's got a 
oblong hole there rectangular hole and I notice that it's at 90 degrees to the direction of the float so that's my direction of float so I need to drill that hole and then file it to that shape okay so there's my thing there's my plate there's my dot I've drilled the holes and I've drilled and filed that piece in the middle so it goes like that this piece here has a some sort of a washer on it seal you know like a rubber seal This is the instructions and it tells you the tank depth there and then two dimensions A and B. A is that dimension there like that from my thumb to there. Not from there but from my thumb to there and B is the dimension from there down to there. I haven't measured the depth of the tank. This is uh, the sender and that's so you can imagine the bottom of the tank's got to be about here hasn't it. That table is actually in inches which is a bit so if we say eight and a half inches for the depth of the tank which is where my thumb is I've got it on the top it that's on there this ruler's on the top edge there I'm holding it with my little finger eight and a half inches an eight and a half inch tank A is five and one eighths and B is four and three eighths surprised it hasn't all gone metric so that dimension there needs to be four and three eighths which is there so I've got to adjust this down a bit. I don't know if this screwdriver will do it. Yeah. Four. I've overdone it slightly. four and three eighths. My camera stopped for some reason. When the camera cut out I was just setting that dimension there. Then what I realized was when I received this this wire was wrapped around there so I undid it again and wrapped it around and I put that mark there so I could easily set it back to where it was. What I did then was I set that dimension there to the other dimension on the table, five and one eighths, using my trusty ruler. So that's set to five and one eighth, and I tightened up the screw, and then I compared it to this one, and it, it looked to be a little bit out, so I just gave the wire a little bend there just to try and bring it more in line with the other one so this is this end is the critical end isn't it you want to know when you're empty you don't, you don't need to know when you're full you ain't going to run out when you're full are you so that's it then and what I'm going to do next is attempt to fit this to the truck one of the um, good things about putting the individual planks in the back of the bed is that I can take individual planks out. You can tell it's been wet because the boards are really tight. You know, they've swollen up. Okay, there we go.
I'll just go and disconnect the battery. Yeah. You know, you have to remember it's a tank full of fuel at the end of the day. You don't want any stray sparks, do you? Script. Oops. Oh. <laughs> I know you're going to say, oh Mark, that's why it won't work. No, it, it, it doesn't work anyway. You know, even just moving it manually like that, it doesn't work. That, I think. Yeah, yeah, that looks right. Right, so that got to go down there like that. I think it's got to be like that. I might need to open the holes up a little bit. So I'll go and open those up. That didn't go too well. Tried drilling it while I was holding it in my hand and it dug in. I'm going to see if I can find the screw, which is underneath the truck. <laughs> Get underneath and have a look. I found it. I kind of was riffling my hand through the grass like that and it popped up that'll do so there's the wire like that there we go that's nice and tight i'll leave the board off i think for a bit i don't know why in case i feel i need to take it out again that's that end of it sorted so I've got to go and work out what to do up at the other end now. What I've done is I've put the gauge into the cluster there and on each of the little terminals I've put um, like um, a male spade uh, adapter. Right, try again. No, uh, this is just rubbish. I'll get some screws and spire clips. There's my three wires. So they've got to come up to the back of here. This is the sort of crimp I use. And I managed to find these pliers, which are actually pretty good. That goes in there like that. Then feed that in there like that and just look to see it pop out the other end and give it a good squeeze really good squeeze there that's a good crimp give it a little tug and what I do I put a bit of shrink wrap over that heat shrink over that but I won't bother with that because that's um, earth Right, this one needs power, and that's the power for the instruments there. To be honest, I could do with a slightly smaller connector. That will take uh, a much bigger wire than these. In fact, I think I'll use the bigger crimp on this. These are very thin wires, but it's a very lightly loaded circuit, you know. Okay. I'm not going to go mad with that, but I'll swap it over to the smaller one once it's started. Give it a good squeeze. There you go. There you go. It's not bad. Okay, give it a little pull for, you know, test. Okay, good. Right, and this one's the uh, signal to the 
sender which is this wire here so that needs to go to there so that can be trimmed off in a similar way Just give these this a little start. Just check the camera's still running. I'm not sure I actually did anything then. Good thing about these, it, it does that crimp as well as that crimp at the same time. could never quite afford any of them, you know, them ones with the ratchet sort of handles. There we go. Right, a couple of bits of heat shrink. And uh, I suppose I could just connect it carefully like that. Make sure it's not touching anything. That's earth, that's that, that's that. So let's turn it on and see see if it reads. Connect the battery first. Can you see the gauge? Down there. Look, the gauge is working. Quarter of a tank. Turn the ignition off. There, quarter of a tank, nice, good. Here's my wire. Just put a bit of heat shrink on there, look. It's a tiny bit big, this stuff. Not great. I wanted it to go over them two little, I wanted it to be over those two little prongs. Ooh, it's hot. goes in there. That's the one that goes to the sender. Do this one. I suppose it wouldn't hurt to actually put it on there. You know, you'd still be able to pull it apart, wouldn't you? So I'll put it over like that with just a very slight overlap. Okay, that'll do. Still pop back a bit, but that's all right. These are for like the um, oil pressure and the water temp, neither of which actually work at the moment. So, so let me see if I can put this back in. With the speedo cable disconnected, I've been able to pop it through. I can't quite remember how to, oh, that's right, you have to get it like that I think. Get all this in there. There's an angle you can get it through at like that. Then you get it and kind of bring it back then. Is put the screws on, you know, put the nuts on the back that hold it in place, but I've never actually had them on. Maybe I could do that. Okay, let, one last check then. I suppose I should have disconnected the battery. There you go, fuel gauge reading. There, look. And lo and behold, it's reading the same as it was before. So that's good, isn't it? So my only working instrumentation is the uh, ammeter. These work actually, the mechanical gauge. So actually I've got a full set of instrumentation thinking about it. 
it would just be nice to get them working in here. You know, it's something to work towards, isn't it? And I've got, I want to do a proper installation on these and I'll, I'll drill the holes and sort it all out. But I want to make sure I'm happy with the location first. Okay, right. Thanks very much anyway. Thanks for following along. Thanks for taking an interest. You know, thanks for... Uh, well, it'd be nice if you can leave a comment. It'd be nice if you can give me a like and a subscribe. It's all very much appreciated. Thanks very much then. Bye. Ahem. <clears throat> <clears throat>